hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is emily if this is your first time here you're welcome and if you've been here before thank you very much for coming back i'm currently a third year medical student at the nipro medical institute and i've been getting some questions about the program so i thought i should put everything together in a video which might be useful to someone out there please do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more useful videos like this thank you very much so the first question says you're doing the four years course why yes i'm doing the four years graduate entry program and this means that i will start the six years degree in the third year so i will do third year till the sixth year making four years in total um, why this is because i have a bsc and an msc in biomedical sciences so that gave me the opportunity to be able to uh, get admission into the graduate entry program but you don't really need an msc all you need is a bsc and because it is quicker and also it is cheaper than doing a six-year degree so that is why i chose to go for the four years course the second question says did you have previous study or how did you gain entry for this course I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in biomedical science and this allowed me to gain admission into the graduate entry program and I actually applied through Medlink students. The third question says, what degree do you obtain after completing your studies? After completing your studies, you will get an MD, which is a doctor of medicine. So it is not an MBBS or an MCBHB. This is an MD, which is a doctor of medicine degree. Question four says, since you studied biomedical sciences, why didn't you start from year four? One of the reasons why I decided to start in year three rather than year four was just because I don't think I was ready to go straight into clinical rotations since my role as a biomedical scientist doesn't give me the opportunity to have patient contact so I feel that if I start in year three I would be eased in into clinical rotations rather than going straight to year four and be expected to know what to do in a clinical setting and also because the GMC requires your primary medical qualification to be made up of at least 5,500 hours so I feel it would be a safer option to go for the four-year degree just to make sure that I have enough hours to meet the requirements. Question five says, why DMI and why Dnipro? There are a few reasons why I chose to go to Dnipro and to go to DMI. And the first would be the fact that it gave me the opportunity to study medicine within four years rather than the five or six years. I actually looked at other universities like in Bulgaria or in Romania, which is very popular with UK students, but most of them require you to study for six years. And I didn't want to study for six years if I could study for four years. So that's one of the main reasons why I chose Dnipro. And also Dnipro is cheap and it is in Europe. So it would give me an opportunity to travel and explore Europe. And also because I already had a BSc and an MSc, from the UK so it sounded like a good idea for me to step out and explore other places so that would be the main reasons why I chose the Nipro and when I spoke to Medling the Nipro sounded like a good idea it was cheap it was affordable and also it's a four years graduate entry program question six says for graduate entry do you have to study everything from year one and two for the graduate entry program at the NIPRO, you will not be required to study anything from year one and year two, but you'll be expected to have adequate knowledge to progress to year three. So there is no class for you to um, repeat or do year one and two. You will just go straight into year three and you will continue year three alongside everyone that started the course from year one and year two. But there are several resources available on the university portal that covers year one and year two that you can go over to have an idea of what the first two years entails. But you won't be going to join the students in year one and year two to cover year one and year two uh, modules. You would just go straight into year three and continue the program like that. 
Question 7 says, do you get all the study materials from the professors or a platform? So you get study materials on the university portal, on Google Classroom and in G drives. These are information that has been prepared by the lecturers themselves. So you would have access to PowerPoint presentation on the portal and also like Google Classroom, then to textbooks and also other lectures that has been pre-recorded, which you can access easily. Question 8 says, is it clear exactly what you will be asked in the examination? For each module, you would have a syllabus with every topic that you would need to cover for that particular module. And this is how you would know what you need to study for the exam. But the lecturers also will let you know their method of examination, whether it is through MCQ or oral assessment or by essay. So that would help you to prepare adequately. And also they would let you know everything that you need to cover and the pass mark that is required for you to pass the model. Question 9 says, how are you examined and assessed? Assessment can either be in form of an MCQ, an essay or oral examination. So you usually get your essay or MCQ after every class and you might be required to submit that essay on the same day or a few days after the lecture or any time before the next class. So that is how you assess. Then you might need to do some module control which is like a test to examine everything you've learned over a period of time. Then you might have a final year exam, which is everything you've learned in that module. Then you'll be graded in a point of 1 to 5, depending on how well you perform. You need to score at least 3 points for you to uh, pass the module. If you score less than 3 points, you'll be required to retake the module. Question 10 says, do you get graded during the lecture? This will really depend on the lecturer. When the lecturer asks you oral questions in class, they usually grade you and add the marks to the grades from your assessment or your assignment of MCQs or essays. And they take an average, which will be your final grade for the module, where some lecturers only grade you based on your assignment and your MCQs. Question 11. How many exams do you write? For last semester, we had nine modules and only had exams on four or five of them. So the rest were based on our weekly assignments and oral questions in class. Question 12 says, are your lectures recorded and you can watch them anytime? It is not usually encouraged to record the lectures as the lecturers want you to be there and attend the lectures physically. So actually recording of lectures are usually discouraged. But the lecturers sometimes do have pre-recorded lectures which they would upload on like Google Classroom for you to listen to and watch at your convenience. It's usually relating to the topic for the day or for the week, but they usually discourage students from recording the lectures if they are the one presenting. This is just because they want students to be committed and actually come to class rather than relying on listening to the lecture video at the end of the lecture question 13 says what happens if you miss a lecture if a class is missed you'll be required to rework this class and this means we attending the lecture to be already questioned and submit any associating assignments with this lecture so it means you will do exactly what you would have done if you were present at the lecture so for a lecturer to arrange this rework for you you have to get a slip from the dean's office with details of when you were absent, the name of the course, and probably an explanation or evidence as to why you missed the class. With this slip, the lecturer can allow you to rework the class. But some lecturers are quite flexible and they can just arrange a suitable time with you on their own for you to come and do the rework. Question 14 says, how many hours a day do you have lectures and for how long? So for the graduate entry program, we have lectures every day. That's Monday to Saturday. That's for my group. Maybe different from other groups, but we have lectures Mondays to Saturdays. This could be just a lecture or up to three lectures in the day. And some other supplementary classes like the anatomy classes or the crop classes at the end of the day. So the average duration for your lecture is usually between one and maybe 
maximum one and a half, two hours, depending on the module and the lecturer. Some may be as little as 30 minutes, 45 minutes, depending on what they need to cover. So the duration will depend on what the lecturer has to deliver or the information the lecturer has to pass across. And the last question, which is question 15, says, for the three years clinical rotations, can you do it in any other countries or it has to be done in Dnipro? For the clinical rotations, you are able to do it in other parts of the world, but you will need to arrange for this yourself and also you will need to get a permission from the university to be able to do this. So if you know any doctor or any consultant or if you've got any link in any hospital, it could be possible for you to do your placement outside of the Nipro. But you will need to arrange for this yourself. The university would not help you to arrange this. So it would be your responsibility for you to make sure that all your rotations are sorted and you fulfill all the requirements that you need to meet at the rotations. Just bear it in mind that you might need to pay for these rotations, which is an additional cost on you. If you do it in the Nipro, it's already included in your tuition fee. But if you decide to do it elsewhere, you'll be required to pay for this. And you will still be required to pay for your school fees at the Nipro. So this is just an additional cost for you to consider if you would like to do your clinical rotations outside of the Nipro. And that's the end of all the questions I've got. If you've got more questions, you can get in touch by email or you can leave comments under my YouTube videos and I'll try my best to respond to your questions. I also have other videos about how to apply to the Nipro Medical Institute, how to apply for your visa, how to apply for your residence permit, then a detailed video about the course structure, the mode of examination and the whole course in general. So please have a look at this for more information thank you very much for watching this video once again do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel and i will see you in my next video thank you very much bye for now